Hey parents, do you ever feel like the discipline approach you're taking with your children is maybe not working? Are you tired of making the same discipline mistakes over and over again? Do you wanna learn how to have a discipline approach with your kids that is effective, respectful, and loving? If so, you're in luck. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the top 10 discipline mistakes that parents make and how to avoid them. Because when you avoid these mistakes, you'll be able to set clear expectations, you'll be able to communicate more effectively, and you'll be able to use positive reinforcement to discipline your children in a way that actually works. My name is Todd Sarner, and I'm a psychotherapist and parenting coach. My mission is to provide parents like you with the education and resources you need to have the family life that you've always wanted and to raise children that thrive. I have been a parenting coach for almost two decades now, and I have seen parents make the same discipline mistakes more times than I could possibly count. That led to me writing this special report, the top 10 discipline mistakes that parents make several years ago. The PDF of this report was downloaded thousands of times, and that's what inspired me to make this video today. So without any further ado, here's my list of the top 10 discipline mistakes that parents make. Discipline mistake number one, taking your child's behavior personally. Many mistakes that parents make with discipline are the result of them taking their children's behavior personally. Often this involves parents interpreting difficult behaviors as being either willful or disrespectful. Most child behavior is not personal at all. It is mostly instinct and impulse and imitation. There is almost always a perfectly reasonable explanation for how they're behaving. For instance, and I'll cover this more later, when you don't take time to connect with your child before trying to get them to do something, they are almost guaranteed to ignore you or defy you. This is an instinct they have when they don't feel connected to you. When we take this behavior personally, we aren't seeing what's really going on and we're making it about us rather than our child. And when this happens, we're not gonna make good decisions. Parents who learn to not take their children's behavior personally and rather to get curious about what's going on and take responsibility for the situation are going to automatically become much more effective. Discipline mistake number two, thinking discipline is about reacting to your child. One of the most fundamental mistakes parents make when it comes to discipline is believing that discipline is about what you do when your child does something to make them stop or do it differently. This is not what discipline is supposed to be. If you see it that way, you're starting from the wrong place. Discipline has the same Latin root word as disciple. It's about being a good teacher and a good leader. Most of parenting is about being proactive and avoiding problems in the first place, not reacting to your child when you think they've done something wrong. In my experience, this comes down to being proactive in three different areas. Parents need to be proactive about their children's needs for connection. They need to be proactive about structure and ritual and environment. And they need to help their children get out their energy, both physical energy and emotional energy. When parents stop reacting to their children and see most of their work as being a good leader and being proactive, this can make a radical difference in how effective they are and parenting can feel a lot better. Discipline mistake number three, acting like you're equals with your child. It is wonderful to want to be loving and respectful as a parent, and you should, but one of the biggest discipline mistakes that moms and dads make is parenting their children as if they're equals with them. To do our job right as moms and dads, we simply must be in what we call the alpha position. This means we are like the big mama bear or papa bear. We're not dictators, but we're also not their best friend. We're there to take care of them. When parents are trying too hard to be equals with their children, they're not really able to do their job effectively. And often, when parents are trying to be equals, some children will move to be in charge of themselves and start bossing their parents around. This mistake can be related to mistakes one and two. When parents are taking their child's behavior personally or reacting to them, they're being more like peers than being the firm and loving leader that children need. Make a goal of being on the road to becoming more and more of an alpha parent to your child. When you do, you're helping them to feel safe and secure, and you'll avoid making a lot of the discipline mistakes that result when parents are trying to be equals with their kids. Discipline mistake number four, not taking the time to get connected first. Getting connected with your children regularly, but especially before trying to get them to do something, is one of the smartest parenting practices there is. And not doing so is part of the biggest mistakes that I see parents make with discipline. We're not supposed to assume we're in connection with a loved one, especially our children. 
Children have strong instincts to not listen to somebody if they don't feel connected to them in the moment. The biggest day-to-day -day behavior problem that I hear about from my coaching clients is when their children defy them or refuse to cooperate with them when they need them to. And most resistance comes from not connecting first. And I recommend to parents that they don't see this as a parenting trick, but rather a practice that they make part of their home culture. If you regularly take time to make sure that your kids feel connected, everything will go better. If you don't take the time to get connected first, expect to have a lot more problems with your kids and that often these problems are going to then escalate. Don't underestimate the power of learning from this one discipline mistake. Discipline mistake number five, not understanding how to teach consequences. The number one tool parents have to positively shape their children's behavior proactively is teaching consequences to their children in the right way. Not doing this is one of the biggest discipline mistakes that I see parents make. Children need to learn cause and effect as it applies to their behavior. They need to learn that things they do or don't do affect their lives and the lives of others. If they don't learn this, they're gonna have a lot of problems in life. My experience is that most of the issues that parents struggle with involving their kids can be solved by teaching consequences in the way that they're supposed to. This can take some time and patience, but it works. Consequences must be clear and consistent. They must be connected to what our child actually did or didn't do. And we have to be calm and matter of fact in giving those consequences. And it's important, if we promised a consequence for an action and we're following these rules, we must follow through with giving those consequences. All parents should make it a priority to learn how to teach consequences the right way. I made a whole video about this. I'll link to it in the description below. You'll be doing yourself and your kids a really big favor. Before we get to number six through 10, I should point out what a big, big mistake it would be if you don't like this video or subscribe to our channel. Doing this lets us know that we're making content that helps you out and it helps YouTube know how to send you the best videos for the answers that you need. Discipline mistake number six, not buying time until your child can do something. This one is simple, but it's very important. As parents, we must understand that a lot of our job is simply to buy time until our children can do something that they can't do yet. A lot of discipline mistakes happen when we don't understand this. In my experience, parents often assume that their children can do something that they don't know how to do yet. And when you assume this, it can lead to you getting frustrated in the moment and it can lead to feelings of shame in your kids. For instance, before a child is at least five to seven years old, they don't have a fully functioning prefrontal cortex, a part of their brain that is critical for paying attention, for having empathy, and much, much more. Like when a child is on the ground and playing with a toy and they look like they're not listening to you, it's probably because their brain can't do two things at once yet. This isn't their fault, they just can't do it. Don't expect your child can do something just because of their age or what they look like. That's a mistake. Look for evidence that maybe they just don't know how to do something yet and buy time until you can teach them how to do it. Discipline mistake number seven, taking what your child needs away from them. Another common mistake that parents make when disciplining their children is taking away something that their child needs. This is not a good practice and usually just leads to more problems over time. Sometimes like when a child isn't listening, a parent will threaten to take away their favorite toy or an experience that they were looking forward to like a friend's birthday party. Sometimes a parent can threaten to take away or does take away a bedtime story when it's been a tough night with their kids. The problem is that children have very strong instincts of attachment. And when we use the things that they're attached to against them to try to encourage good behavior, it actually teaches them to not care about those things they're attached to so much. When kids stop caring about the things that they were attached to because they were being used as leverage against them, they start using language like, I don't care and whatever. And when they're in that place, they're usually much, much harder to parent. Don't make the mistake of using things your child cares about against them as part of your discipline routine. Like I said in rule number five, learn to teach proper consequences and you'll get the results without the harm. Discipline mistake number eight, not letting your children have their tears. Children are like all humans. They have frustrations that build up over time. And when those frustrations hit a certain level, 
they are much more likely to act out in some sort of aggressive way. That can be things like hitting and biting and kicking and having tantrums when they're younger. And then when they get older, it can also go beyond physical aggression, things like um, passive aggressiveness or sarcasm or just being mean. The natural way that the body lets go of the frustration that leads to aggression is when we feel our feelings and process them until they all come out. Usually this includes a really good letting it all out kind of cry. When kids don't get out their tears, it's pretty much a sure thing that they're gonna be aggressive in some way. That's why it's important for parents to set limits with them in a firm and clear but loving way. When parents help their kids get out their tears, they're helping avoid aggression and they're helping their children become adaptive and resilient human beings. Avoiding upset or being aggressive back to your kid is a big discipline mistake. Discipline mistake number nine, not using structure and ritual. Like I said earlier in the video, the true meaning of discipline has more to do with structure and ritual and being proactive than anything else. This is a sort of parenting superpower we have to avoid a lot of behavior issues and stress. Have you ever wondered why so many teachers can handle a classroom of 20 or 30 young children and not have issues a lot of the time? A big reason in this is because teachers are using a lot of structure and ritual to help them get through the day. When kids know what we're doing and when we're doing it, it helps them to feel more secure and it cuts down on behavior issues that happen when something takes them by surprise or they expected something else. And kids don't have a great sense of time. Rituals are something that they understand more. Try to create more structure and ritual in your home, especially around times of transition when you typically have more problems like in the morning or after school or before bed. Smart parents use structure and ritual and predictability in a way that creates a more calm and peaceful home and lessens behavior problems. Not using these things is a very common discipline mistake. Discipline mistake number 10 raising your voice or yelling at your child. The last of the top 10 discipline mistakes I see every day is when parents yell or raise their voice at their children out of frustration or trying to get them to behave. It's one of the biggest concerns that parents share with me. Look, we all get frustrated. That's just part of being human. And most people know what it's like to get so frustrated that we end up raising our voice. But this isn't an effective way to parent and it actually causes harm. Yelling completely shuts down the learning part of your child's brain so they literally can't learn a lesson in the moment that they're being yelled at. It also just feels awful to the child who's often just overwhelmed or disoriented. Learn to be more proactive as a parent. Learn more effective parenting strategies. Find ways of lowering your own frustrations so that you can make better parenting decisions. But raising your voice to a child or yelling is always a discipline mistake. Okay, so that's my list of the top 10 discipline mistakes that parents make. What did you think? Do you make some of these mistakes? Which do you make the most? And did I miss any that you think should be on the list? Please leave your comments and questions below and be sure to let us know what topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. And I've left links below to other videos I've done that expand on the ideas mentioned in today's video. You may know that I like to end my videos with one of my favorite parenting quotes. Today's quote is by parenting author L.R. Nost, who said, Parenting has nothing to do with perfection. Perfection isn't even the goal, not for us and not for our children. Learning together to live well in an imperfect world, loving each other despite or even because of our imperfections, and growing as humans while we grow our little humans, those are the goals of gentle parenting. So don't ask yourself at the end of the day if you did everything right. Ask yourself what you learned and how well you loved, then grow from your answer. That is perfect parenting. Try to keep that in mind as you address any mistakes you think you're making. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you in the next video.